Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab. In today's video, I'm going to show how you can make above the average web developer salary, which is apparently $54,000. I don't know how accurate that is. That seems pretty low, but I'm going to show you four platforms that I've personally used to get jobs in on the past and how you should go about getting each one of those developer uh, platforms, how to optimize your chances at getting a job on said platform. And if you found value, make sure you leave a comment. It helps with all the algorithm. Let me know what other types of videos you'd like to see, but let's jump straight into the first platform which is my personal favorite especially if you're a beginner that's going to be upwork it is insane with the amount of jobs that get posted every single hour on upwork especially if you are a web developer that does react there are so many react jobs that get posted as you can see just within the past like hour we have one two three four um five six seven. i don't even want to count them it'll take too long but we have more than one page of you know jobs and you can see the average rate a lot of them are willing to pay from 15 to 50 dollars 18 to 25 dollars 25 to 45 dollars an hour and this is by the way um you know usd so uh, it, it already like at the lowest one that's 15 dollars an hour you're already making more uh, than over here. Now, it's important to note that there are a bunch of different nuances um, for Upwork. Number one, a lot of the times, if you can speak English really well and you overlap with the North American time zone very well, you have a lot higher chance of getting a job as opposed to someone who does not. And the only reason for that is because a lot of these people that are hiring on these platforms are from North America and they need people that can overlap with their hours. So, it doesn't mean if you're not from America or Europe or you don't overlap with any of these time zones, you can't get a job. Just know that it might be slightly harder because a lot of the jobs might bar you depending on where you are. That's not to say, though, that there are a lot of jobs. For example, this one is coming from China and they probably want someone who is also in their time zone as well. So it's sort of a trade off depending on where you live. From my experience, the majority of jobs will be OK with you living in North America or Europe. Um, but other than that, you can see I would personally recommend, number one, going for jobs that are hourly. And what you're going to do is you're going to search up all the technologies you are comfortable with and even ones that you think you could learn on the job. For example, before I really knew React that well, I was still taking React jobs on Upwork and taking those jobs helped me learn more as I went on the job. A lot of the times people hiring on Upwork are going to be, you know, individuals that just have something they need done. Not a lot of the times you're going to have like entire, you know, organizations that are hiring that have real interview processes a lot of the time they're just gonna get on call with you and they're gonna ask can you do this job do you have this experience and if you say yes and you know you have had the experience and you're being sort of genuine um, then you'll probably end up getting that job um, depending on whether you can land the interview and the other thing is you can see how many proposals people have spent so for example sometimes in jobs that um, bar people uh, depending on their location you might have maybe only 10 to 15 proposals or less than five and I highly recommend applying to those ones because for some of them that don't bar might have uh, 20 to 50 proposals or 50 plus and by that time it's really really hard to actually get yourself noticed so I would, uh, for Upwork, you know, maybe check the technologies you're interested in, maybe once an hour during working hours, and just apply to everything that seems good. Now, in terms of applying, uh, the trick here is to keep your uh, response within one to two paragraphs, and I would say no more than like three sentences per paragraph. Um, and the reason for that is, if you want, you can test this out yourself, but I've hired a lot of developers on this platform as well, and the majority of people will copy and paste this giant template that they have saved up to every single person, and it's just a bunch of nonsense. But if you just go and write maybe one to two paragraphs um, specifically for this job, you know, you don't use a template or anything, you specifically, you know, if someone's like, we're looking for a Web3 front end, um, minting app then you can be like yeah hey there i can definitely help with your minting app i have experience with web3 if you have experience with web3 um i've done something like this similar in the past i'd love to learn more about it and maybe at, throw in a question at the end like um you know uh is this going to be on Ethereum or something like that? That is how you optimize your chances. Do not copy and paste giant things. I've hired so many developers off Upwork. I can't tell you how many times I just skim past and just completely uh, reject the applicants that just copy and paste this giant thing uh, as opposed to, you know, maybe writing one or two sentences about why they actually think they would be right for the job. Now, the next platform I'm going to talk about 
talk about is TopTile. And I've been in TopTile for I think around six years now. It's one of the first platforms I got into before I even knew a lot about freelancing um, or and, and working remotely and stuff like that. And TopTile is probably one of the hardest platforms to actually get into. But that being said, once you are in the platform, you are in for life. And if you look at Glassdoor reviews, uh, you can see the interview process. Um, and I believe they even talk about it here. The first process is going to be an online test. The second one is simply going to be a phone interview. And the third one's going to be a take home project, uh, depending on what type of developer you are. For example, if you're a web developer or front end or back end developer. So I can honestly say that getting into TopTal is probably one of the best things that I did. Um, as a university student and at the time there wasn't very many people on TopTal and uh, being a university student was sort of unheard of to be on the platform because they only hired you know really uh uh, really um, veteran people, uh, seasoned experts in the uh, field and stuff like that. But they have expanded a lot more developers there and they're a lot more open to who they are hiring. So even if you are a beginner developer, if you really believe in your lead, lead code abilities and your data structures and algorithms um, and your ability to make you know a basic project, if you're doing front end, uh, you know, it might just be something related to front end, um, then I highly recommend getting into TopTal. They also have some of the highest rates. Um, I've heard stories of people in the high three digit, um, you know, rates uh, in order uh, for their hourly rate um, of what they charge clients and stuff like that. I can't go into too much detail um, about that, but just know that from my experience, they typically uh, tend to have clients that are willing to pay more because they work with such big and amazing uh, companies and stuff like that. So TopTal, and I will have a referral link, by the way, in the description for all of these sites. And just know that by signing up with my referral link, if you get in, we both get a dollar amount depending on what technology you're on. For example, if you're a React developer, uh, we'd probably each get around 2,500 USD when you start your first job. Um, so uh, make sure you sign up with my referral link if that's something that interests you uh, since we both get the money. Um, and yeah, so I would highly recommend TopTal. Just make sure before you apply that you are really brushed up on your data structures and algorithms. You really practice your lead code and practice your phone interviewing skills on a website like interviewing.io because if you do not get in, they might bar you from applying again for three to six to even two years uh, depending on how far you made it. The next platform I'm going to talk about is Gun.io. Now, Gun.io is a really, really nice company. Um, they're sort of like TopTal. They started uh, a couple of years ago and they've slowly started to grow and um, you know being a part of so many of these platforms uh, I got to meet the team of Gun.io I talked to the CEO of Gun.io and I can for sure say that the culture of uh, people that you work with at Gun.io is absolutely amazing it works the same way as TopTel where they pair you up with a company to work for um, and of course you know they'll take a bit of markup on your rate uh, that's how they make money. That's how they make a living. They find you all of these places and take a bit um, of, uh, they charge the client a bit extra of what your rate is so that they pocket the difference. Uh, but the recruiters, the CEO, all of these people I've worked with and the community I've interacted with in their Slack channel has been absolutely amazing. I've recommended quite a few people into Gun and I can't recommend it enough. I think it's an absolutely great platform, especially if you're interested in things like full stack development and Web3. They specialize in a lot of Web3 uh, clients, but that's not to say that they don't have regular clients as well. And the last platform is going to be similar to the previous two I talked about, and that is going to be Braintrust. And by the way, for Braintrust and Gun.io, the process to get in is way more relaxed than TopTel. Um, if you even have platforms or like if you're a seasoned engineer and you have a huge work uh, experience behind you, then Gun.io and Braintrust might just get you in without having to interview at all, but it depends on you and your experience. But essentially, um, Braintrust is going to be similar to the previous two platforms where they match you with a company. And the difference is uh, with TopTal, it's almost all consulting. It's almost all freelance. But with Gun.io and Braintrust, you can even get full-time uh, opportunities, um, you know, instead of contracting and stuff like that. And a lot of them are also remote as well. But um, Braintrust is really trying to uh, focus in on the actual Web3 aspect of things, which I find really interesting. They have a ton of Web3 clients. Um, I love the community. They're built, uh, their community is built off Discord, which is really progressive. I personally use Discord for almost everything um, when I when it comes to my company and my interaction with people. Um, so the fact that they are built off Discord and they don't use a platform like Slack, I think is absolutely amazing. Um, and I really look forward to what they could do in the future. I believe they're still relatively uh, an early... Um, 
early stage uh, company, but I have applied to jobs on the platforms. Um, I talked to the CEO as well for this uh, company um, who got me into the platform to look around and stuff like that. And I also like that, you know, when you work, you earn like, you know, something small, like their own little currency and stuff like that. Obviously you make like US dollars, but you also on the side earn like uh, their brain trust token, uh, which is like $4 each or something. So it's like a nice little like side thing um, as well. They have like cool little things on the side going like that. So that is my favorite four platforms when it comes to getting a developer job. If I had to start all over, I would start with Upwork, build up a bit of a portfolio, build up a bit of confidence working with clients while practicing my data structures and algorithms on the side. Then I would either get into TopTel and take a full-time job there or get into one of these platforms here. And that is pretty much it for this video. If you found value, make sure you leave a comment. It helps a lot with the algorithm and I'll see you guys in the next video.